Digital Information Fluency, or DIF, is the ability to find, evaluate, and use digital information effectively, efficiently, and ethically. DIF involves internet search skills that start with understanding how digital information is different from print information, knowing how to use specialized tools or finding digital information, and strengthening the dispositions needed in the digital information environment. As teachers and librarians develop these skills and teach them to students, students will become better equipped to achieve their information needs. The DIF model that I'm most familiar with was developed in 2001 when the Illinois Mathematics and Science Academy received funds from the U.S. Department of Education to research and develop training in the then largely unexplored field of online information literacy. It immediately became clear that the largest needs in this area were for professional development and resources to help educators and students improve their ability to locate, evaluate, and use digital information more effectively, efficiently, and ethically. Of course, more than a decade later, this is still the case, and based on my experience, a majority of students are deficient in their digital information fluency ability. The process works in three parts. Locating, evaluating, and then using. Let's start with locating. Locating is about locating information efficiently. What information am I looking for? Where will I find the information? How will I get there? This might seem elementary, but involves, it involves many competencies, such as identifying key concepts in a research question, uh, translating a natural language question, like I want to find an authentic Mexican salsa recipe, into a search query, like host colon mx space quotation mark, salsa recipe, quotation mark, space, dash, dancing. Um, <laughs> other competencies include the ability to identify terms that are likely to be effective as is, um, the ability to identify terms for which more effective vocabulary is likely to be required, or creating effective and efficient search queries, developing and applying vocabulary building strategies effectively to conduct a digital information search. Um, seeking out more specific terms, also known as hypernyms, to narrow a search, or more general terms, known as hyponyms, to, to broaden a search. Effectively acting on informed decisions to revise search queries based on search results or feedback. Um, interpreting evidence that results are relevant and significant. Other location competencies include effectively and efficiently selecting digital collections based on their characteristics, uh, selecting digital search tools based on their effectiveness and efficiency, and selecting and applying appropriate search strategies to effectively and efficiently locate reliable digital information related to academic learning goals. For example, learners should know the organization of digital information, select visible and deep web collections based on their characteristics. Um, select features of a variety of digital tools on the probability of effectiveness and efficiency. Navigate hyperlink browsing strategies and be comfortable with branching logic and so forth. Finding what you're looking for is one thing, but evaluating it to determine how good it is requires almost an entirely different skill set. Digitally literate folks can evaluate the quality of a search result to determine its usefulness in the search process. For example, they can determine whether or not the digital information addressed the natural language question, and they can decide whether or not the digital information suggests revisions to search queries. They can also evaluate the quality of a search result to determine the reliability of its content. Now, there's two components to this. One is to know how to investigate the internal content reliability or accuracy of the findings online, and the other is to know how to investigate external validation of information. Finally, there's the ability to evaluate the quality of a search result to determine the reliability of its source, the author, the publisher of the content. How reliable is it? Is there an author bias or are there references made that can be checked? So you found your information, you've authenticated it, but now you need to determine how to use it ethically. That's what the using component is all about. 
How will you ethically use the information? Do you cite your source when you use content? How do you decide whether or not to integrate digital information related to a specific information task in the first place? So in this module, these are the things we'll look at. We'll look at tools too. It's one thing to know the big picture of digital information fluency, but it's, it's another to use tools and understand concepts about how the net works to get the job done. We'll begin by exploring the following question. What's the difference between searching and browsing? When you're searching, you're exploring an indexed database web page created by a search host. When you're browsing, you use your web browser to explore a website. Conceptually, the big difference is that when you're searching, you're looking for a special content found on a particular page of a website. When you're browsing, you're simply looking through interesting SERP links. That's the search engine results page, or SERP, SERP, to find information you're interested in. So when you have keywords in mind, when you have a specific URL in mind, you are searching. Otherwise, you're browsing. For example, if you're just interested in learning more about buffaloes, you would type in buffalo in the search engine and take a look at what pops up. But what if you want to know how many buffalo are there in, the, in North America today? Uh, it takes a bit more savvy and focus to find out. It's a fine nuance, but an important one. In one, you're looking for information on Google. In the other, you're doing more. You're, you're truncating URLs to discover ownership. You're using special operators to reveal hidden references. You're searching deep web databases to track down elusive sources. In browsing, you're exploring. In searching, you're investigating. Next, we'll take a look at databases. Knowing where to look is vitally important. We all know that Google is very popular for most people, but what if you can't find what you're looking for on Google? The trick is to not form a Google habit. Google is just one database, but using just one search engine can cause misconstructions that may make search less effective. Now, if you recall from the video you saw in the previous module, search engines don't search the live internet. The only time you access the live internet is through browsing. Search engines access the indexed internet. The quality of various databases differ as well. For example, there's nettracker.com, a juried database. The search results that come through nettracker are filtered or supervised by experts.